Hey guys, thanks for watching, but let's just jump right into this. I have found an old frame for a treadmill here um, in the dumpster. It wasn't a powered one, but it's a little bit long for what I was thinking, but it, it looked a little more solid than actually building one out of wood, so I'm going to cut it off right around here. Also, this end had a, an actual free reeling treadmill, so I need to be able to power it, so I have to drill a hole and put a piece of ready rod through. Um, I'm using half inch ready rod. I'm gonna put it through and then I'll put bearings on both sides so that I can power it from this end right here. Here's the belt I took off it. So I'm gonna reuse that and cut it and stitch it up. So let's do some cutting. This on my power bandsaw here and I'm cutting off just over a foot. I think it was around 13 inches. And it beats doing it by hacksaw. And I could have done it with my grinder, but this was faster. So there we are. There's the pieces I removed. I just have to clean up these edges. And I left enough space. I have to take those tabs off too. Now I want to clean some of the, uh, the threads off of the ready rod so that it doesn't keep pulling and dragging along when it's uh, trying to glide on my bearings and stuff. So I just run it in a file on one of the bearings. Then I went and had a good look at how high I had to actually raise this up to be useful to me. So I just kind of mocked up a three inch piece of cardboard tube um, at the height I thought I would be so that I could get some measurements and get an idea of what I actually had to build. And here's a look at all the parts I bought from Princess Auto that I will be using here, including the bearings. I'm not sure what happened to the footage of me making these blocks, but I drilled out one block, put the actual bearing into it, and then I added another block to hold it from going through because I didn't actually have the proper drill bit at the time and no Forstners, but I have them now. So foreshadowing, I actually replaced some of this. With that, I also showed the footage of me cutting a piece of wood with a hole saw and then gluing it into the inside of that drive wheel. Okay, we got a proof of concept. I just got my little modulator here, tiny little motor with wicked gearing, my coupler, and that's my conveyor with a speed adjustment. And I can build the sander. Nice. Okay, well, I don't know how long that little motor is going to last. Um, it was only a few bucks, so I thought I'd give it a try. I'm still on the lookout for a windshield wiper motor. A little more power, a little bigger, 12 volt. But So basically, I just took a regular treadmill, chopped it down, or took off um, about a foot, cut the belt down. I removed the bearings in this shaft, I fixed them, I pinned it so that it actually runs. It used to run just free and now I wanted to be able to drive it. So I got a piece of ready rod, coupler, motor, and a little modulator, which I'll mount somewhere over here. But anyway, so that proof of concept is done and now I can start on the actual sander. So I'm just going to build the sander on top of this. And then I'm going to build a little gizmo that lifts this into the, into the drum so that, anyway, it's nice and solid. I'm going to change the bottom of this, but this thing is so solid. I'm super stoked that I'll be able to get super accurate, um, super accurate um, sandings. So some nice thins for making my nets and maybe some fly boxes and stuff. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. I will tell you though that I miss my table saw every damn day since I sold it to make space but if you don't have one of these track saws or a track saw adapter like this one from Irwin you need to get one man. every one of these cuts is perfectly straight every time they're awesome I built my entire 
mini camper using this saw. You can check out the video down below if you haven't already seen it. The more you watch, the more you'll realize. I don't like to actually measure stuff. I use my T-square and my dividers to measure out stuff all the time. So here I'm just using the um, T-square to mark a line so that I know where I drill my holes will be dead center when they uh, screw into the next board. This project I chose the floor screws which are a lot thinner so there's going to be a less likely of me splitting my MDF but I'm using uh, a countersink here with a sixteenth of a drill uh, inch drill bit. You want to be very careful using MDF because it will split very easily so you have to pre-drill everything so just a small pre-drill hole and glue and screw and you are good to go but I chose the thinner screws just to keep it from splitting as easily. Okay, so I measured out the space I needed for underneath the belt, the conveyor belt, and now I'm just going to glue the sides of the sander onto it. That way I have the ability to move the conveyor belt in and out of the actual sander if necessary for cleaning or maintenance or whatever, or what have you. So I'm just adding this first side on here now with these wood screws. Okay, well, I repeated the same step for both sides, so now I have two sides. I'm just going to check my square and do a measurement across the bottom and a measurement across the top. I know measurements, I don't like measurements, so I'll just use my square instead. And I can see here that it's a little bit out of square. I don't know if it was the saw that was on a tilt or if it was the table that's kind of crooked when I did that. So I just wanted to make sure when I screwed these top braces in that I was able to square it off. Two strips that were three inches wide to match the width of my actual sander and I glued them glue and screwed them across the top just for bracing and I do end up removing one of these um, it was in the way of the actual conveyor but I will be moving it back when I put on my dust collector Okay, these are the two pillow blocks that I bought for the, um, the half inch shaft to drive my actual drum. First thing you'll notice that the three quarter inch MDF isn't wide enough to hold the pillow block, so I'm just going to cut a couple blocks and then screw them, glue them and screw them on the side so that I have a little extra thickness. Okay, so I measured, now I'm just cutting down space I think it was two and a three quarter inches down for the pill block so that my height of my drum which you see me testing earlier was where I wanted it to be when the conveyor reached it so now I have to cut a square piece of MDF and glue it and screw it right into here to give me the thickness so there's that I'm not sure exact sure of the measurements it was just the thickness of the or the length of the pillow block and then I just made it about three inches to make it stronger Okay, here I'm just testing the uh, slide block, which is supposed to drive the wedges um, to raise and lower the conveyor, but this changes twice. So I'm going to block at the end with a double nut on my 3 8 rod, 
Then I have a hole drilled through a piece of 2x4 with a threaded hammer in nut. And then I have double nutted on both sides of this block. So when I turn this handle, the actual 2x4 will travel the length. So I still have to put on the actual ramps. And so right now I have it sitting up so that I can measure the height and how tall I need the actual ramps. Now, I did say that I've changed this twice. I actually made a newer one after the proof of concept. I made a bigger handle. But I'm now thinking I'm going to use my small motor to drive it. Okay, I cut four equal blocks of wood. I put half inch rod between them and I put bearings on each end and then I nutted them at the end so that this ramp will actually roll up and down them. Now this is awfully squeaky and like I said I end up changing it. I change out the blocks and how the hole was drilled through the 2x4. I apologize for the missing footage again when I cut out these uh, 3 and an 8 hole saws out of my MDF. I wanted them to be 3 inches after I sand. I wanted a 3 inch drum so I started with 3 and an 8 hole saw. Okay, on my half inch rod here, I actually put it in the vise and then I put my um, grinder on it using a cutoff wheel and made two two inch slots, kind of keyway slots, but they're not square, so I'm gonna put a screw into them. So then I have slid down each one of these rounds, added glue, and then two or three of these um, inch and a quarter brad nails to clamp them down tight together. After I got all these pieces together I clamped them, double clamped, and then I brought them into the house where it was warmer to dry overnight. I wanted to make sure they were really good and dry. Okay, we're having the first look at the sander as it's coming together. I'm just checking everything for level. I've got the conveyor in now. I just have a clamp here to keep it from sliding out. So now I need to build the box for the motor. And so I've measured it all out. And now I will just cut them with my track saw and then I'll cut the rest on the table saw. And just like before, I pre-drill these holes and countersink them for the screws. Background, I got a box and a couple pieces of wood, and that's how I got my measurement. So once I lined the motor up to where it was supposed to be, then I did the measurements from that. But I had to build a little mock-up height so that I could... I didn't want to guess and be kind of off by even a millimeter. So I prefer to see things kind of put together and then... That's why I do a lot of mock-ups with different pieces of stuff so that it helps me measure and see problems that exist before they actually happen. You can see on two of these ends here they didn't get actually um, drilled out properly and they split. Okay, I've got the motor box started. So this whole piece is gonna sit this and this is gonna sit on another sheet that's left there. So it'd be one big sheet. So I can mount this box permanent to that sheet, which will be mounted permanently to that sheet. Then I have to address just the little tweaks because it's just slightly off. So just a couple little shims, maybe some washers 
might be able to wire this and spin this up today and get that all sanded off. Okay, now that I got it all set up, I have a better idea what size wedges I needed to lift them. So the ones that were in there, my testers, have come out. And so I've cut two here and I've screwed them together so that when I do the sanding off, everything ends up being exactly a perfect match. Because you don't want one side taller than the other, that's for sure. And there it is now screwed onto the new block with another hammer in threaded um, nut. Time I drilled the hole a little bit bigger through the wood so it doesn't squeak. Okay, so I cut a circle using a divider to measure uh, on a piece of MDF, and now to sand it perfectly, I just put a screw into it and then clamp the board onto my table belt sander. And now I'll just keep spinning this around until I have a perfectly symmetrical, round, smooth wheel. This will be the new hand wheel. But again, I think I might use that small motor. To drive the up and down. We'll see. Here I'm going to use my dividers to find out how much space I actually need so that I can cut a hole and mount the switches. These switches I've taken off an old drill press, a small tabletop one, so I thought I would utilize the switch for here. For the end of this so that the um, conveyor can lift up and down and I made them from this piece of angle. I just cut a couple pieces out of it and I'm using it as the bracket. Okay, so here's a first look at the uh, new wheel on there and the new ramps and you can see the nut turning in there just ever so slightly. It moves very slowly but that's good because small increments are better for what I do. Okay, we're going for the the first spin up. Just a test. I just have a plug wired direct without the switch. So we have Okay, you'll see that both those three inch braces are in the same spot nice. because I had to take the back one off so you can see that I could get the conveyor up as high as it is. Okay, I've got the modulator and the motor on and here it is. Speed control. Turn it right down. Perfect. All I did is I brought in the main power cord here and then I spliced it to um, a receptacle, a female receptacle here because um, my modulator runs on a, a 12 volt adapter so I plugged that in there and I spliced it into the main power in. So they both get power separately. Now it's gonna close this box up, get ready for the test. Okay, I wanna sand off the rough edges and make this a perfect three inches. So what I did was I put down a nice smooth board first, guaranteed to be flat, and then I put some 90 grit or 80 grit onto the uh, piece of MDF on top. Now I'm just gonna slowly keep raising up and sanding until I get these things perfectly smooth at three inches and uh, after this I'm going to go to a smaller grit there we are that's a 120 that I have on there now on a smaller equally as smooth board and now I'm going to go back and forth and make sure that it's exactly the same and uniform all the way across before I raise it up well there you have it it's not complete I got a lot of tweaks to do um, this doesn't come up all the way from my thins. Um, this touches the side of my pillow block on the way up. So I'm gonna have to just move that in a little bit. Um, one more tweak and I'm gonna build the top for the um, dust collection. But I got this sanded off. I just put my, uh, my little calipers on there and it was, exactly three all the way across so i'm pretty happy about that and it does come up perfectly flat when i have a board in here so i just have to go and figure out how i'm going to get this just a little bit higher i mean it comes up pretty high uh, wrong way just um just not high enough for the super thin stuff i'm doing i mean i could do them with a sled for sure 
Um, let's see. Ways to go here yet. I know it looks close. It should get stuck here any second. Right around there, it's going to touch my pillow block. So I just have that bit of a fix right now. The motor's working good. It seems balanced. But it's just, you know, there's a little bit of my hand can go under there. But the stuff I, um, I sand is quite thin so and that's one of them there so a little bit of extra work to do still pretty stoked looking good okay so i got the conveyor working but i wasn't happy with the motor so i ordered a new motor so i am going to do this temporarily finish up this video i have a three-way u-clamp on my drill and and literally i can adjust the speed by just turning that in so for now a simple answer uh, I can get it working and do my first test and finish up this video and uh, we'll see what happens let's have a look <laughs> I have the motor going the wrong way. Oops. Sand against the feed, buddy. It seems to be working pretty good, but the the treadmill itself, the actual um, material I'm using for the conveyor is too slippery. And you'll see right here, it actually pops back. The raising mechanism that I've uh, put in here seems to work really nicely, but the more I think about it, the more I want to put that little electric motor there. Okay, a couple things. This is too slippery. I'm gonna have to replace it with some something a little more grippy. It won't grab it and pull it through. Uh, the sander part's working okay, except that it just keeps slipping. So I'm gonna have to rethink this belt and maybe just go with some sandpaper. Join up a big piece of that sandpaper. That looks like it works really good. Seen some videos. Or maybe I could spray some contact cement on this and make it sticky. I don't know. I guess it's just too slippery. But thought for sure I had a win there, but nope. Uh, works fine this way though. I Yeah, that way it's working really well. I mean, the fact that it's slippery actually helps it. So I'm gonna get started. I got another project I gotta get going. I need some thins, so I gotta start making some thins. So I'm gonna finish with this, build the way it is. Stay tuned 
for the final touches. I'll edit and or film and edit those later. There'll be an upgraded motor with a, a gear drive. And I'm going to have to rethink this before that gets here. I ordered it already. Actually, I ordered it this morning. So I'm going to build a, a motor with two gear drives and to drive that, that, that um, pulley at the end. And then um, I'll have to rethink this. But I think it's going to end up being uh, a big sheet of sandpaper. You can get those in a big roll. And then I'll just get it for this size, cut it, glue it together, and hopefully that'll work. Because there's another spot on here um, where I did a stitch out. I don't know where it is. Right there. I got a little bit of an overlap. Of course, every time it grabs, it lifts it up and put a little bit of a sand round hole in a in the wood. So that would have to be corrected anyway, but because it's so slippery, I think I'm going to toss it come up with another idea but for now i think i'll take this off and i'll just sand wood on wood okay, so well thanks for hanging out this far i know it was long i tried to compact as quick as i can as short as i can there's a lot involved in making one that's solid and stable obviously there's more to this i may just end up building one of these um, from scratch i mean the frame seems to be good so if you found any value in what you've seen so far, um, please don't hesitate to subscribe. It really helps me out. And uh, I will put together the piece for the chain drive right after this, as soon as it arrives. And I'm going to replace this for sure, 100%. But in the meantime, i got to make some thins, so I'm going to let you go. Thanks very much, you guys, for watching this video. I hope, hope we all learned something. And a big oops on the old uh, wire backwards. Always... <laughs> sand against the feed <laughs> against the feed i don't know why i didn't think of that when i put it in there anyway thanks for hanging out you guys appreciate it i love the comments so if you hate it be kind if you thought some things were pretty cool let me know i'd love to hear about it if there's anything that you would have done different also let me know because i don't mind making changes see you on the chain drive take care